So in OCD, which isn't our primary subject um, for today, it's concerns about dirt, con concerns about things being symmetrical, con concerns about doors being locked, things needing to be checked, things needing to be just right. Or, and this one gets a little bit more to the crossover towards um, substance um, sex control issues, um, intrusive thoughts, bothersome thoughts that keep coming into your mind, basically whether you want them there or not, and especially even when you don't want them there, they keep coming in, bothersome thoughts that could very much include cravings. So these cravings um, definitely have a brain-related aspect to them. And so one of the things that we're trying to do in doing therapy for these conditions is getting people to be aware of craving when it arises, intrusive thoughts when they arise, and then the key comes in how you reframe or, or how you understand what's happening to you when those things occur and how you interface with them you know on a on a personal level in, including very much on an intra-psychic level on uh, on 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 a perspective of inside yourself how do you process understand um plan around make um decisions with the awareness of these cravings that are intruding in into your mind and when it gets bad everybody knows that it can be intense and it can be incessant well um in my work which as i say is mainly on ocd there's a model that has been helpful that that I think has a pretty direct application to um, impulse control issues, drug alcohol issues. And it's these four steps, and I actually wrote about them in this book that has been around for many years now, um, called Brain Lock. And in um, obsessive compulsive disorder, I'll just like make one example out of the brain, although this is not this is not exactly the area where all of the drug abuse problems come up, but it is an area that's known to be related to craving in relapse situations. This is the bottom of the front of the brain, sits right over the eye sockets, and um, it's called the orbitofrontal cortex. And in people with obsessive compulsive disorder, it gets overactive. And these are studies that were done 20 years ago now, which showed that people who have obsessive compulsive disorder have these overactive areas in their brain. And that particular area called the orbital frontal cortex is overactive consistently and is linked to, on the one hand, in OCD, what we call an error detection circuit. But the thing that actually makes that area of the brain interesting in a substance abuse context is that there were studies that were done in the 90s and, and, um, and uh, in the early part of this decade. And, and it has been shown in multiple ways in multiple different studies that just to use one example, if you have a person who has had problems with smoking cocaine, um, who is in some kind of a recovery, so they're no longer acutely on drug, but have only been in recovery for several weeks to several months. And you just show them a photograph of a cocaine pipe, that area of the brain, that same area of the brain, the orbitofrontal cortex, lights up. And uh, that actually makes a significant amount of sense. Um, so to, just to give a brief explanation of that, um, it's intrusive to be sure. I mean, this is a person who's trying to be in recovery about the last thing they want is to have craving to smoke cocaine. And 
there's no drug involved. All they're seeing is the picture of a pipe. I mean, most people would look at it and say, what's that? You know, a pipe, a glass pipe. I mean, what wouldn't have much effect on a person's brain. But if you've used that pipe to smoke cocaine, it has a lot of effect on your brain. And why? Well, that area of the brain um, is very involved in making valuations in terms of what you want and don't want in the environment. So that if you see things in the environment that are related to either things that are considered rewards or things that are considered punishments, either way, um, that area of the brain, the orbital frontal cortex, um, gets activated in, in circumstances like that. Circumstances where a person is in the, exposed to in the presence of phenomena related to reward and punishment. And in that kind of a context, um, it makes sense that that area of the brain, which is also lights up when a person gets a sense that something is wrong. So when things are in your environment that you just think something needs to change or something is desirable or something is undesirable about this thing that I'm um, hearing, seeing, um, etc., smelling, that area of the brain lights up under those circumstances. Now, in the case of um, drug uh, addiction and this particular experiment that I'm describing having to do with looking at a cocaine pipe in a person who has a history of using cocaine in that pipe or in pipes like that, it's associated, they will tell you, with drug craving. So drug craving arises in connection with just seeing the picture of a pipe. Well, a lot of things that have treatment relevance uh, come out of that, that, that study. And it's a study that's been done in various ways by various groups using brain imaging over, as I say, the last um, 10 years or so. 